You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's OBEHAVE with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the Obehave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Today's show will be music to your ears. I mean, literally. It will also tell the tale of why grass smells oh, so good and illustrate puppy love in the most powerful way. Are you intrigued? You should be. That's because our special guest today is an author and platinum. You ready to hear that? Platinum selling musician and composer Alan Lazar. He unleashes an amazing tale of lost love and the people pet connection in his book, Rome. Now that's R O A M, as in wandering around, not R O M E, as in the Italian city. Welcome to the show, Alan. Thanks so much, Arden. I really appreciate you having me on the show. Well, I'm delighted to have you as a guest. I read Rome in one setting, which if any of you know me, that's quite a feat in itself. I'm a multitasking gal. But I was captivated by Alan's portrayal of this wayward beagle poodle mix by the name of Nelson. And so will you. I promise. So everybody sit and stay. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Time for a pause. Four furry ones actually sit and stay. All Behave will be right back. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Your pets will stay warm for the winter and be runway ready. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the All Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. My guest today is Alan Lazar. Music lovers, his work is far fetching and fabulous. Alan Lazar is the platinum-selling musician-composer. Yep, I did say platinum, and that's sure better than gold. He has scored more than 30 films and television shows. Some of them you might know, uh, Sex in the City, The Gangster's Paradise, Jerusalem, and the theme for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Darling. Now, officially, Alan is CEO of Lalea Music. Is that the right pronunciation? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, production music library for film and television. But he's got three dogs at home, Chicky, Milan, and the real Nelson, who just simply know him as the great guy who gives them tasty treats, lots of belly rubs, and cozy places to snooze. You know, Alan, I'm really delighted that you're here. And speaking of hearing, your novel, Rome, has an added specialness because you have composed and included a seven-part soundtrack that people can download and listen while they're reading the book. I mean, that's genius. This is your first time out of the shoot as an author, and you come up with this brilliant idea? Awesome. (laughs) Well, thank you. It was, in fact, the uh, idea of my publisher. When we were in the production process on Rome, my editor at Atria Books, uh, Sarah Duran, called me up and uh, said they would love for me to write a song or two for Rome. They had uh, experienced a very positive reaction to Jody Picot's new novel, Sing Me Home, which uh, features some songs on a CD. And uh, they knew I was a composer and thought we could do something uh, you know, new and interesting. So uh, I thought about it for a while, and I just thought it would be a really great way to enhance the, the reader's emotional experience of the book. And 
um, so I decided on seven different points in the novel instead of just two or three like that asked where I thought some musical emphasis could work to enhance the characters, the plot points, or the emotional beats. And uh, I made the pieces quite simple. I, I recorded them on my Steinway piano in my studio. Um, they're just simple piano pieces. And it was very exciting writing music for my own novel because uh, I'm used to writing music for other people's TV shows or movies. So, um, oh, yeah. It was cool well, to do something in my own, uh, my own book. Well, I don't know many authors who can do a medley of words on a computer keyboard and then what you do, do the same on a piano keyboard. You're, you're hitting on all different cylinders here because of the music and the words. And, you know, you've really orchestrated quite a score with your first novel. And I don't mean that as a, a pun. I mean that in all sincerity. So I want to go, bravo, bravo, pause up, pause up. You hit a home run. <laughs> Thank you so much, Arden. I so appreciate that. Well, let's get right into it because what we're going to do, listeners, because this is a radio show, is we're going to play a little portion of two of the songs from the book, Rome. The first one is going to be called The Smell of Grass, and we're going to have Alan explain a little bit about that in a second. And the second one is called The Great Love. So, you know what, folks? I'm going to let Alan take over the wheel here. Alan, tell us a little bit about what the premise of Rome is and this dog named Nelson. Well, um, you know, for many years, I would take my dogs for a walk, and I'm sure many of your listeners have experienced this. The noses of my dogs were just glued to the ground. They were glued to the grass as they were kind of walking Mm -hmm. along, and it was endlessly fascinating to them. And I would sit and wonder, uh, often I'd lie in bed at night and think, what are they smelling? What are they thinking about? You know, there must be just magical stories within that grass for dogs. And, um, you know, obviously for dogs, smell is their primary sense, So, whereas vision is our primary sense. For a dog, smell is everything. It defines their world for them. And so the smell of grass was really the kind of inspiration for Rome, in a sense, because it got me to thinking what goes on inside a dog's head. And it was kind of the seed of the story in many ways. I talk about it on the very first page of the novel. And so it seemed, uh, when I got to writing music for the book, it seemed like I should really focus on that, the very first piano piece. And I think when you listen to the piece, you'll hear something that's uplifting and inspirational. But it's also got a a hint of darkness in it just because the story, although it's an uplifting and inspirational story overall, does have some hardship in it for our, our hero dog, Nelson. And so there's a little hint of that in the music as well. This is where we're going to be playing now a portion from the song called The Smell of Grass. You know what, Alan? I think it's interesting that you have three dogs at home and you are allergic to dogs, so you have (laughs) miniature poodles, correct? 
<laughs> yeah, correct. Um, poodles were a big discovery for me. You know, I think poodles get a bit of a bad rap sometimes because mm-hmm. a lot of people kind of dress them up funny and <laughs> give them funny <laughs> hairstyles. So I had a bit of a prejudice against poodles. And then when I met them for the first time and played with them, I kind of discovered they were amazing dogs. And for me in particular, the fact they were hyperallergenic was a big thing because uh, as much as I love dogs, I can't have most dogs in my home just because I'm allergic to them. And uh, discovering poodles was a big thing. So so I have a golden retriever husky named Chipper. I guess that means no mm. play date with your three, huh? <laughs> I'm sure uh, my three would probably uh, <laughs> give them a pretty hard time. <laughs> they yeah, have no you're... sense of their own size, my dogs. They, they kind of uh, they'll meet a great Dane and sort of start barking at him. They have no No, I'm just thinking about the hair that Chipper would leave behind on your premise that would make you sneeze for a lifetime, probably. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm sure I probably couldn't resist giving him a big hug. That's what happens to me around dogs. <laughs> That's right. So... Speaking of the character, though, the character is actually a beagle poodle mix, and you were jokingly calling it a beetle or a puggle or something. So I don't want to spill the beans on the whole thing about the plot line, but I find it interesting that you picked a dog whose breed is well, well known for their sense of smell, and that's the beagle. So describe a little bit about what led you to create this mutt named Nelson. And I know you've got a miniature poodle at home named Nelson, the real Nelson. Well, you know, I think the fictional Nelson in the book and the real Nelson, they they have a lot in in common, but they're quite different in many ways. Obviously, first off, the real Nelson has spent his entire life at home with us, leading a very sheltered uh, life with our family. He's a proud member of our family. When I got to writing the novel, I didn't want the dog to be a pedigree. And one of the reasons is, is Obviously, one of the messages of the book is that there are so many dogs in shelters and so many dogs without homes, and many of those dogs are, are mutts, and there's so many millions of dogs that, uh, you know, unfortunately disappear in animal shelters every year, and I wanted the dog in the book to be a mutt, to be a mixture of several breeds, just because he could more represent, you know, just many of the strays that are, are found across America and so desperately need homes. So I thought, well, let me make him a combo of breeds, a little bit of the real Nelson, some poodle. And then beagles are actually just a breed which I I particularly love. And I was very touched. In fact, yesterday I was reading an amazing story you may have seen about a beagle that apparently survived the pound. He was put in the... Oh, yeah. In the cheek. Yeah. Yeah. Just incredible. Apparently, you know, three dogs in the last 12 years have managed to survive that. And and he survived, and it just felt kind of amazing that happened the day before Rome was published, you know? Can you imagine how he must have been able to hold his breath or something? You know, I'm intrigued by that when I saw that story, frankly. I was like, you go, dog, and I hope that he lands a wonderful home because talk mm-hmm. about the ultimate second chance dog. That one, I can't describe anybody else that could fit that bill as well. Yeah, I mean, apparently there's been hundreds of requests to adopt him now, which is uh, is wonderful, but I, you know, I just wish all those other dogs out there were also getting adopted that need homes, you know? I agree. Now, in the book, the dog, Nelson, does spend a little bit of time in, in not a very nice pet shop. There are some that are benevolent to him, but certainly not the owner. And I think you're giving a message out there too, aren't you? I think so. I think really the message is, you know, I'm not against all pet shop owners. There are many wonderful ones, but unfortunately, a lot of pet shops are provided stock by puppy mills. And I just think that you know, when it comes down to it, if, if folks want to get a dog, they should uh, do their very best to go to a shelter and adopt one, you know, and I'm sure many of your listeners have done just that. But yeah. I think that would probably be my message, yeah. Yeah, and there's also great breed rescue groups, too, because there's folks that really dig a golden retriever or a beagle or a poodle, and mm-hmm. there are some wonderful breed rescue groups out there, too. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So with this, you've got this couple, Katie and Don, and Nelson ends up being adopted by this young couple, this isn't a marriage made in heaven, is it? <laughs> well, I think it's it's one of those marriages that starts off really well with a couple really in love, and the pressures of work and, and life kind of, uh, you know, come to impinge on them, and Don cheats on Katie, and the marriage kind of starts going south, and it's within that sort of circumstance that, uh, that Nelson actually escapes from the home. Don is in a very bad mood one day and leaves the gate open by mistake, and Nelson escapes through the gate and begins his eight years kind of lost wandering through America. This dog starts, ladies and gentlemen, in Albany, New York, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he ends up in California? That's <laughs> you know, a you lot know, of travel. <laughs> it's a lot of travel, but you know, I have to tell you, when uh, before I wrote Rome, I started seeing these articles in the New York Times and elsewhere about 
dogs that had uh, often turned up seven or eight years after they'd been lost due to the miracles of chip technology. They right. had been found across the country. And uh, that was one of the inspirations for Rome as well. Like what happened to those dogs during those seven or eight years they were missing and how did they find their way across the country? And of course, we'll never know what their journey was. But uh, a lot of dogs that have actually turned up thousands of miles away from where they got lost. And it's just amazing to me. It's a testimony to, I think, just what amazing animals they are, you know. I think, though, you captured a lot of what maybe people wonder what happens because you had a little bit of a, a lot of poetic license, if you will, with Nelson's voice in the book. And, I mean, game for adventure, but, boy, he really needed a warm meal and he needed a safe place to sleep. And mm-hmm. he meets all these cast of characters. You did a great job on weaving the story. And I just don't want to spill the beans at the end. So I want people okay. to buy your book because, <laughs> you know, you'd like to have a sale. But describe the cover because it looks like a dog with a bad hair day. And you don't even see the face. You have purposely... <laughs> pictured what would Nelson look like from the back of the head. Tell me why that, and it works. You know, I have to tell you, I, uh, I can't take credit for the cover. I had initially said to the publisher, they, uh, it was a wonderful publisher, Atria Books, and they had asked me for my input on what I thought the cover should be, and I said, well, I think it should definitely be a dog's face. They sent me a couple of examples to look at You know, a few months later. None of them was a dog's face. There was one of a dog's nose. And um, the actual cover, which is a dog facing away from the camera, so it's the Uh back of a dog's head, looking out on this vast green expanse. It was not what I expected. I did a double take and looked at it, and then I was like, wow, this is just perfect for the book, because it's kind of the dog's point of view. And I think it's a rather uplifting, you know, happy, inspirational cover in a lot of ways, that this dog goes on a journey, and he does encounter a lot of adversity, but he triumphs through that. And that's the message of Rome. And so the cover just really seemed very well suited to it. I, I thought they did such a great job. And yeah, he does have a <laughs> pretty bad hair in that, uh, in that photograph. I'm not sure where they found the photograph, but um, it did really. I was going to say, if I didn't have ears, that kind of looks like the back of my head on a, you know, when I just wake <laughs> up in the morning. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, you do have that green in the background. When you look at the cover, folks, for the book Rome, you are going to see so many different things. And after you read the book, I highly, highly encourage you to just pick up the cover and look at it again because it's going to just beckon you to different passages in the book. So I think it's brilliant, and I think your music is very good. I just wanted to ask you a little bit about life with three dogs. Now, Hmm. Chicky is, what, 20 years old? Is this right? We didn't move the decimal point wrong, did we? (laughs) No, she's actually 20 years old this year. Oh, my gosh. What's her personality like? Chicky is an amazing dog. She's very feisty, and she's kind of... um, maybe a little bit more like a cat, actually, than a dog, in, in that she's not a particularly affectionate dog. Like Nelson, the real Nelson, he just loves being with us, loves spending time with humans. Chicky kind of spends a couple moments with us, and then she goes off and does her own thing. She's quite uh, self-sufficient, and she's always been that way, you know? She's made it two decades. That's pretty good. She's in, like, over 100 years old if she was a person, right? Yeah, well, like, what's that? You multiply by, by seven, right? So she'd be yeah. 140 years old. <laughs> So, wow, take that, Betty White. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, it's quite amazing what happened with Chicky. About a year ago, she was going through a very bad time. It seemed like she was on her last legs. She'd lost seven pounds. She was struggling to breathe. She was struggling to walk. And um, I took her to our vet, and he ran a lot of tests. And he called me two days later with a very sort of somber tone. And he said she had just a few weeks left to live and that she was going through advanced kidney and, and heart failure. And we were very, very depressed about it. But we reckoned it was the last few weeks and she hadn't been eating. And uh, we would just start giving her some food she really loved. So every night we would give her three pieces of her favorite, uh, very well-known brand of fried chicken. And, oh, um, you can say it. We're not, we don't have an answer. Go ahead. <laughs> it's KFC. <laughs> so every night since then, she's had three pieces of KFC. We would, we'll go and buy a bucket for her every couple of days, and she oh wolfed down. <laughs> and within a week of starting that, she was barking for it. Every dinner time, she would just start barking. Oh, and, my gosh. Um, yeah, slowly but surely, she started making a recovery. Within a month or two, she was back to the normal weight, and uh, she was acting like a little puppy again, just barking, being really feisty. And, so it's um, uh, finger licking and paw licking good, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh it was God. kind of funny. I'd, in August of this year, I, I took her to the vet for a checkup because she needed a, a new prescription for a Lasix medication. 
And uh, I told him about the fried chicken, and he just shook his head and said, that just can't be good for her. Then he but 20 her years heart. old? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He, he checked her heart and, and her lungs, and he was amazed. He said there was no more water on her lungs. So it's now right. a year later, and she's doing great. She's you know, she's like a little puppy. <laughs> you know, there's something to that secret herbs and spices, I think, that we've mm-hmm. never known in the vet world. You may have stumbled on something there with the good <laughs> Dr. Allen. We're speaking with Alan Lazar. He is a musician, composer, and now first-time novelist with a book called Rome. And before I forget, I also want you to be able to enjoy, savor a bit of the piece called The Great Love. This is actually The Great Love is between Nelson the dog, and Katie, the wonderful gal who rescued him from a pet shop. So, take a listen. We're speaking with Alan Lazar. We're going to talk a little bit more about his other two dogs, Milan and Nelson, and the book and his score that he created for this book right after we pay for this show by taking a commercial break. So everybody sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Love My Pets, the new single by Mark Winter, available on iTunes. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, this is Jimmy Conway, and this is my favorite program that you're listening to, and I'm listening to right now. Arden is one of my favorites, and uh, I, I never miss the show. I haven't seen it yet, but I never miss it. We're back from the lot. Just check the paper and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to Obehave. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the Obehave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Our guest today is Alan Lazar. He is the author of the book, You Must Get. It is a perfect gift for the holidays for all the pet pals in your life. It is called Rome, R-O-A-M. And it is a tale of a beagle poodle mix by the name of Nelson, who takes an unexpected eight-year journey all over America, and hopefully he gets to be reunited with his great love, a gal who rescued him from a pet shop by the name of Katie. And in this book, I think part of the inspiration, as we're talking with Alan, comes from his own three dogs. We talked about his Methuselah dog, Chicky, who's like 20 years old. Now, Nelson and Milan, are their ages combined still under what Chicky is? Or tell us about Milan first, I guess. Milan is actually, in fact, she is 
Cheeky and Nelson's daughter. Um, okay, there is doggy drama in the household. Okay, <laughs> Cheeky and Nelson's daughter. So um, Nelson is 14 and okay. uh, Milan is 12. Okay. And Nelson and Cheeky actually had six pups together. And we kept one of them, who is Milan. Milan and Chiki have a very, very close relationship. They, I mean, Milan is one of those few dogs that is lucky enough to spend her life with her mama. They sleep together every night. Uh, Milan still lets Chiki like, lick her tummy like when she was a little baby. Um, Milan has a very different personality to, to Chiki and Nelson. She's, a, <laughs> she's kind of crazy. She's um, very wild, very affectionate, just jumps around a lot very high energy dog. And Nelson in terms of his personality is well, he's pretty similar to the Nelson in, in, in my novel. He's just an incredibly loyal dog, incredibly lovable, very smart, very well mannered. He has like a very strong sense of of hierarchy. Um sometimes we kinda of call him Jekyll and Hyde because <laughs> with the other dogs he's very much the alpha. He likes to be kind of in control of the other ones. But when humans are around he's completely submissive you know, just very, very submissive to his owners. He's a pretty amazing dog, I have to say. <laughs> well, of course, I'm biased, but <laughs> well, yeah. no, that's all right. But let's talk a little bit about his name because you don't sound like you're from Chicago, like me. <laughs> so there's a little Nelson connection, isn't there? You know, when I got Nelson, I wanted to give him a special name, a sort of like a heroic name, and I'd seen uh, folks call their dogs King and and stuff like that. And I come from South Africa, and uh, Nelson Mandela had always been a very inspiring person to me. So the real Nelson was actually named after Nelson Mandela. And then when it came time to write the book, I just kind of couldn't come up with a better name for the hero dog in my novel than Nelson. (laughs) And at first I was like, well, do you think it's okay for me to call him the same name as my real dog? And it just couldn't come up with anything which felt better. So I kept that. You've touched what brings out the passion in you. And I'm I'm so glad you didn't name him something easy like King. Because to Mm -hmm. you, the definition of a king or someone that is powerful in a benevolent way is actually Nelson. I think, you know, also um, Nelson Mandela obviously spent many, many years in prison. And and then, you know, after all of that came out and was actually very conciliatory and not full of bitterness. And I lived through all of that in South Africa. So I think for my dog, Nelson, the fact he also goes on a very, very long journey and comes out at the other end of it, just still with his integrity and his character intact. I think that's the connection as well, you know. Now, how long have you lived here in the United States? I've lived here for 17 years, and I love it. I absolutely love California. I love America. I'm uh, very proud to be an American citizen now. Um, oh, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. That uh, that happened a couple of years back. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> now, writing a book for the first time, how much are the parallels between writing a book and composing music, and what was the biggest challenge for you? Oh, that's a really good question. You know, I think there's, there's a lot that is similar between the two processes, and there's some stuff that's different as well. Obviously, both of them require sort of inspiration. And for me personally, like that doesn't come as some sort of a big flash. It's more like I, I assemble little ideas and, and little pieces of ideas and gradually kind of weave them into like a bigger whole, kind of like a, a little magpie picking around for shiny <laughs> objects and trying to make something pretty out of them. And both music and writing feel like that to me, that uh, it's a question of assembling a lot of ideas together over time. I think the difference is that music has a very instant visceral reaction. If I'm sitting writing something at my piano or in my studio, the music comes back at you right away and it has this immediate sort of emotional impact. Whereas with writing, it's a very internal process. It's, it's kind of in your head. You don't get much feedback, as it were. It's very easy to procrastinate with writing, just kind of put it off until tomorrow. So I think overall, though, I, I must say, I think I find writing more satisfying it's much more difficult, but the satisfaction when I finished Rome just felt really amazing. And, you know, to be honest, I, I never really thought it would be published. Um, it was just something I did for myself. And the fact that I actually found a publisher and now, you know, folks are going to read it is just, I feel so lucky that that has happened. It's very, very meaningful. I'm just you know, glad people are going to be able to share in Nelson's story. Now, this book is really hot off the press, as we say. How can they get their paws on the book? And uh, tell us a little bit about the score as well, how they can listen Well, to um, it. the book should be available at bookstores throughout America. I know like Barnes & Noble and Books A Million, Powell's, all of those big book chains. Uh, you should find it on the new releases table in the next couple of weeks. Okay. And uh, it's also available online at uh, all the 
the big online retailers, Amazon and you know, BNN.com, pretty much anywhere you look for it, uh, you should be able to find it. In terms of the music, you can listen to the music on my website, which is www.alanlazar.com. Um, Let me just there, interject here, folks. It's A-L-A-N-L-A-Z-A-R.com. There are also links. If you buy the hardcover book, there are links that you can scan with your phone, and those links will take you. They're called Microsoft Tags. They'll take you to a link on YouTube where you can listen back to the music. Isn't and that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing technology which the publisher came up with. They're trying all these like cool new things to kind of introduce new media into books and just kind of make them uh, you know, a new type of media. And in the ebook, you'll actually be able to just like press a button on your Kindle or your Nook or your iPad. Uh, you'll just push a little button and the music will kind of play from your, uh, from your iPad or whatever you're listening on. So. Well, I have a copy of the hardcover, and on page 15, The Smell of Grass, it says, What does it feel to be like a puppy, mysteriously bewitched by the smell of grass? <laughs> Scan here to listen or go to, and they give you a YouTube link. That's brilliant. That really is. I love that. Oh, this no, is, this is how books are going to stay in existence, Alan, by embracing you know multimedia like this, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think Atrium, our publisher, is, is very big on that sort of stuff. I know they're doing this with three or four different uh, novels, coming up with all these unique ways to kind of connect readers to the Internet and just kind of make the experience of reading books a more interesting one, you know? I really hope, folks, you go get your paws on a copy of the book, Rome. On the back cover, there's a kind of a literally who's who in the pet in uh, Hollywood world. And one of them is a quote from David Frankel. He was on my show earlier, Alan, when uh, Marley and oh, me well. came out. I actually knew the real Marley because I was a newspaper reporter with John Grogan. Wow, and, that's amazing. That's so Yeah, we, we literally worked for nine years about two arm lengths apart. So wow. David and Jennifer Aniston and Owen Wilson were on the show, and they really did capture Jenny and John Grogan and, of course, the many dogs who played Marley. But I wanted to read from the back of the cover of Rome, a book by Alan Lazar from David Frankel. He's the guy who directed Marley and Me, and yes, the devil wears Prada. He writes, with the mesmerizing simplicity of a classic silent film, Rome tells the heartbreaking, and yes, heartwarming, story of Nelson, an adventurous and brave little dog as memorable as John Grogan's Marley, Kate DeCameo's Win dixie and even Chaplin's Little Tramp. This stirring quest is no different than Quixote's, a death-defying, wonder-inducing search for love. I guess this is, I can use the music term now. I can go, bravo, Alan, bravo. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I was so touched that David gave us that quote. I respect him so much as a filmmaker. And so when he said he liked Rome, I was so excited. Well, maybe what we can do, because we do this sometimes when we have special guests on the show, would you be willing to uh, give away one of your signed copies of a book? I have a, a newsletter. Absolutely. We can do that. And then people have to say a code word to be able to get to win the copy of the book and then we'll we'll talk with your people and give the person's information so they can you can dash off a copy. Now, we could say the code word would be Nelson, but that would be just too easy. <laughs> so, come up with a code word that everybody's listening right now. We'll say the 10th person who emails arden at fourleggedlife.com will win an autographed personalized copy of this great book Rome from Alan Lazar. What would be a code word you'd like to use? I think let's use the name of one of the other characters in the book, which people seem to particularly love, and that is a truck driver called Thatcher. Thatcher, so, yeah, I like Thatcher. Okay, all right, Thatcher is the code word. Be the tenth person to email Arden at fourleggedlife.com, and you will win a copy autographed, signed by Alan. Maybe his three dogs will put the paw prints on it. We never know. Um, <laughs> yeah, we can do that. They'll be excited to do that. That'd be great. Hey, they're part of the gang, and you got to give the code word Thatcher. So we're about ready to call it a show, but I personally thought you were a delight to be on the show. You just did a great job with this. You composed the writing quite well, young man. Oh, thank you so much. I, I so appreciate it, Arden, and, I, and I'm just so excited for your listeners to read the book at this feels so wonderful that folks out there are going to read my little story. <laughs> it uh, just means so much to me. It's a, a story with a big message. So everybody go get the copy of the book Rome and then take a moment and just smell grass the next time you walk your dog. Smell the grass. Look around. We live in such a got to go, got to be there yesterday, mm -hmm. tomorrow, today world. 
I think our dogs are bringing home the message that sometimes it's okay to stop and smell the grass. Right, Alan? Absolutely. I think that is so, so true. Uh, I think in today's world, we're just bombarded by email and Facebook messages, and it kind of you know never ends. And uh, it's just good to spend time with your dogs to remind you uh, what's really important. Okay, so the next time I eat a piece of Kentucky Fried Chicken, I'm going to salute Chicky. <laughs> I'm sure she will be happy to hear that. Um, I must tell you, because it's a publication day today for Rome, uh, oh. we are getting each of them fillet steaks. So they're each going to have a little piece of fillet steak for dinner. It's oh, their, their award for nice. inspiring us. <laughs> that's very, very nice. And your book is actually being published worldwide. You've got a lot of places that it's going to be unleashed, not just in the United States. So Yeah, it, it'll be, uh, to the current count, I think it's 12 or 13 countries. It's Germany, France, Italy, Portugal, Holland, Norway, China, Russia even, um, Brazil, and uh, nice. I think some more to come as well. So, Well, hopefully um, this show will get more people to pay attention because our show actually goes all over the globe. We even have listeners in Singapore. So, hey, everybody, wow. shout out for all you Singapore listeners. So we do have a little bit of a reach and we'd love to be able to expand your message. You got to take a play bow. This is Alan Lazar. He is the composer, musician, and now author of the book, Rome, a novel with music. You got to check it out, folks. Alan, thanks for being on our show. Thank you so much, Arden. I've so enjoyed this and thank you very, very much. And at this time, I also want to give a big pause up to my producer, Mark Winter. He makes this show happen each and every week. He is the musician, the magician behind all the shows on Pet Life Radio, and we reach more than 6 million listeners every month. Also, at this time, I want to have everybody to dash over to alanlazar.com. That's A-L-A-N-L-A-Z-A-R.com to learn more about the book Rome. So, until next time, this is your flea-free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave! Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, this is the place for a special paparazzi treat. Only on PetLifeRadio.com.